Yisrael Beluchot, the second covenant, a new covenant that Hashem uh, uh, established with the Jewish people on the second Luchot, the second uh, tabernacle, the second tablets. Is there a different... After Yom different, uh, second. Yeah, the second one that was given. Is there a different, renewed, different uh, breed, covenant? Um, oh, another one. Nesiut leiv asher What does it mean? Kol asher yisalibo, nasalibo. The Torah says anyone who has his heart uh, inspired, raised up to do the work. Why, why does it require raising of the heart? What does that mean? And then... Oh, and the, and the beloved contribution of the women who came with their mirrors. Mm -hmm. Three topics. It's at the end of this part. Well, so we, do you want a new covenant? Do we, we might be able to do all three. I mean, I don't know. The new covenant, the raising of the heart to do the work, and the chavivut, the, the, uh, the admirable gifts that were given by these women who came with the mirrors. I mean, which, do you want to do the last one first? Yeah. Are you curious about that? No. You're familiar with it? I think so. Uh, hey. So we go to the first one. Yeah. Chapter 35, verse 1. Yeah. Page. Tapkuf Kalkuvayim, he says. Right? Is that where you are? Lamed Hei Aleph. Lamed Hei Aleph. So he says the following things. So the, the Pasuk, of course, says in that Lamed Hay 1, what does the Pasuk say? Yeah, go ahead. Bal Adat. Kol Adat, yes. The, the, the Adat the Ada is the covenant, the, the community, yeah. Go ahead. Um, Moshe, assemble the entire as assembly. Assembly, yeah. Children of Israel, yes, and say to them, there, these are the things that Hashem commanded to do them. Yes, um, six days work shall be done, right. but the seven day shall be holy for you, a day of complete rest for Hashem. Mm. Whoever does work on it shall be killed. You shall not kindle fire in any of your dwellings. So, so why is this a new? Why is this a, just a new covenant? He says by Yakhel that Moshe assembled all the assemblies. So let's see what the Ramban says. I don't know what he means. Yakhel Moshe called on this earth. Yichlol, call Adat Bnei Yisrael to to include all of them. Hanashim behanashim, the men and the women. For they are volunteers. Okay, whatever. Okay, then he says, because all of them contributed uh, material and, and work to the working of the Mishkan. And now, Moshe, after he commanded Aaron and the Nisim, the, the, the heads of the tribes, and all of the Israel, the men, all of them that Hashem had spoken to on Har Sinai, after he broke the first Luchot, and he put, you remember when he came down, he mm -hmm. covered his head with a, with a, with a, with a veil. Uh, he then commanded them again and assembled them to him, all of the people, the men, the women, and the children. Why did he do that? Oh, so he's asking the question because earlier on, when he came down, it said, when he came down, at the end of last week's parsha, he spoke to them all that Hashem had spoken to him. In last week's parsha, the end, right? And he completed speaking to them. And then, whenever you would go in to speak to God, uh, he would put 
he would take off the mask and uh, the veil, and then we spoke yeah, about yeah, scenes. Yeah. scenes. And then all of a sudden, he assembles all the people. So it sounds like all the people were already with him, I guess. I mean, is that what he's saying? Then he says... So he says that he once again got them all together, right? Um, and he says this has to be, he thinks, it can be, it's, it's reasonable to him that this would be the next day after he got down from the mountain. And he said to all of them, the inyan of the making of the Mishkan, that he was commanded of beforehand. You remember we discussed this before, long ago, and the Pinky wasn't here. This machloket, this dispute about when did Hashem give the commandment of the tabernacle? According to the oh, Ramban, forty days. According to the Ramban, it was originally commanded even from the very beginning. Right. When the calf, the golden calf, sin had disturbed the, the, the relationship, Moshe said, oh, "Sorry, we're not going to make the Mishkan now. You, you guys are all out." Right. And then when they were forgiven, and the second machloket came. He now reinstates. He says, okay, you remember the Mishkan that we were going to build? Now we can do it again. We right. can do it. According to him, the language of the text works well, right, Pinky? Right. Because he went up to the mountain, and now he comes and tells them about the contribution that they should give. Mm -hmm. Some people would say, well, if he's coming down the mountain and he's telling them now about the contribution, doesn't that suggest that he was given the commandment of the Mishkan after the second Luchot? I mean, that's the dispute, right? Mm -hmm. Rashi, Sforno, and some others who say yeah, that the Mishkan was given as a, a way of satisfying the needs of the people for a concrete, for a concrete uh, home of the Kodesh Baruch Hu in their midst, right. not uh, just in the mind and in the spirit, right? Others, according to the Ramban, certainly feels that it's the illustrious intention right from the start. After Har Sinai, Hashem was giving them this commandment of the Mishkan, which would be the embodiment of Hashem's continuing presence with them all the way. Right. So he now, according to the Ramban, he's once again telling them now that they should go ahead to do that which they were commanded already before, and before the breaking of the Lukot, because Hashem had forgiven them, right? And he gave them the second Luchot, and he established a new covenant with them, that Hashem will go among them. Now, going among them, I guess, to the Ramban means the Mishkan, right? Wait a second. Right? Brit Chadashai, the term is the... Brit Chadashai says, Ein Kitisa. Lamed Gimel Zayin, Lamed Dalad Anna. He has about four different. Uh... Yeah, the tour. Yeah. 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 Look at all those are going. Kila Dvarim Asim Tzad Shabbat Nevar Shalom Shalom Adim. Shabbat Shkula Kanei Glam Tzad Kishu. Yeah. Uh, so. So so. Yeah, Rashi says that Maseha Egel was before, and the commandment came afterwards, much after. He has a footnote there. Do you see the first column on the bottom? Pinky, Loka Rashi Shikatav. See Kodem Shibur Likot, the last uh, six eight lines on the first column of the footnotes. See it? I uh, know. Kodem Shibur Halukot in large print. This is another question according to Rashi, the on the bottom. who explained that passages are referring to what Moses would do on the bottom of the footnote. On an ongoing basis, not to what Moses actually did when he descended from the mountain. According to the approaching, it's related there be no necessary or could use prior to the present as assembly. But according to Ramban, there who explained that the passage there referred to what Moshe actually did when he descended from the mountain. The purpose of this new assembly must be explained. Penei Yerushalayim. I feel comfortable understanding that because 
tiger. Which make make sense. So what's the what's the point? What's the point? The point of Rashi. Rashi, Rashi and the Ibn Ezra both say that it is later. It's after Yom Kippur. After the Shvirat Balichot, after Yom Kippur, now. And uh, the Ramban says that this was the original commandment when we started. Right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, are we okay with that? Pinky. Uh, okay. A comment about that? I mean, What do you mean? <coughs> like, look at the last footnote there. Vasuli mishkan v'shachanti b'tochan on the second column, okay. you right? Yeah. She says le'il and whatever. Ela kevan shechatu ba'egel nistalka me'alehem ashchina v'kevan shemachal lehem akadosh baruch hu v'chazara ashchina l'shot b'neim tziva al mishkan v'nistavu bo shenistavu bo kvar according to the Rambam. Others say that this is late, after they made up. Hashem decided to make the Mishkan among them. The question is, what was the original intention? Would the original intention to be, if they never did the Egel, was the original intention to be a Mishkan? According to the Ramban, yes, right? And then you have word, and according to others, not. So it depends on how you do the text. Here, he went up to the second Luchot already. He came down with the second Luchot. And here by Yakel, he says to them, come, right? And uh, here's what you do, right? You don't keep the, you keep the Shabbat. And then he says, this is what Hashem commanded. You know, so on and so on. Now he's going to ask for contributions. The beginning of our Parsha, right? So that sounds like it's a new commandment. After the second Luchot. If you go in order. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, I, 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 had, I had trouble with this. Um, uh, so I don't, I'm not sure what's... Um, I'm not sure what is the um, bothering you. I mean, I don't know what's bothering you. I don't know, I'm not sure what's bothering me. Um, oh. Well, the, 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 the order, the sequence of things, when God gets him up to the mountain and he gives okay. him the second Luchot okay. and he forgives the people of Adi Ego, okay. and then Moshe comes down, the beginning of our Parsha, yeah. and he yeah. tells them, come and bring the contributions and yeah. everybody start working and yeah. so on and so on. Yeah. What does that mean? Is that a new commandment now to make a Mishkan? I think so. Never knew about a Mishkan before. I, um, it's, an, it's a product of their being forgiven now. So. You think so. So the problem is, though, that there were a few partials before, Truma and Tetzave. The rabbi has canceled the shir tonight. Who's the Catholic? I don't know when. I don't know, but I saw on the evening or during the afternoon email tonight. Oh, that's why. I didn't look at it in the afternoon I'm sorry, anymore. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Uh, I guess I guess that's the way they announce it is by the by. Uh, yeah, the news is making up. I guess if we get it in the morning, we'll look at that. I didn't. It could have been there in the morning. I looked at it the, the first I time around three o'clock. I right? looked. I'm saying I looked at it before I left today. Nothing was there at lunchtime either. Okay. So. No problem. Thank you so much. So so that's the question. If if. So, but there is Truma and Tetzave, in which yeah. the commandment is given already to make contributions. But there are. They, uh, and they precede the Egel. But they, they don't. True, true, oh, oh, oh. Kiti says after. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so those people like the Ramban, right, who say that it preceded the Egel, they're happy with that, right? Because it's there, right? Hashem, he comes down from the Luchot, he gives them Mishpatim, after Yitro, Mishpatim, then true matzava. It's all uh, sounds good, no? Now that we have the mishpatim, I came down. I made a covenant. We're going to make a mishkan, right? Then comes the egel, according to the, the way the text is written, right? Then comes the egel, in kitisa. Hashem says, "Oh, this is a terrible people. We're going to get rid of them, right?" So Moshe goes down to the people and breaks the luchot, and obviously there is a big interruption in this plan of the of the mishkan. This is all good. The Ramban, the Ramban works out very well, right? The Egel 
has put a stop to this considered opinion that the the Mishkan was supposed to be laid for them, right? With them, Why and you you're no longer going to get Mishkan. You're you're going to be divorced. So they do tshuva, and the whole process continues until Hashem says to Moshe, "Okay, I'm going to forgive them, and not only that, I will come among them. Not only that, I'm going to give you the yud gimel midot, and not only that, I'm going to give you another set of luchot and make a new covenant with them, right? So this is and like then a... you go down to the people. Moshe goes down to the people and he says." Okay, I've got good news. Hashem has reinstated His covenant with us. And remember the, the Mishkan we were going to make that we put a stop to? Now we can go on. That's what Vayakhel is all about. So to the Ramban, it all flows very nicely. So we have to connect these with Truma. Sure, sure. Makes sense. Right. According to the Ramban. Right? We, right? It's, all, it's all very nice. Comes, comes Rashi and the Ibn Ezra and others who say, no, 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 the, um, the Mishkan Mitzvah is really here. Now, like it is in Bayakel. What do you do with Truma and Tetzaveh? So they say, yeah, somehow they put it over here. The mitzvot, uh, the, 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 don't, be, don't be concerned about the sequence of the way things are written. That was a question I got last, last class. <laughs> What is it? This is bothering me. <laughs> you know, I can't understand the, the order. <laughs> Take it easy. We have no order in this second. You, you have to connect the points. That's the matter. Mm -hmm. you, according to Rashi, you have to put a break after Mishpatim. And you go to Kitisa. Right. You go to a break to Mishpatim. After it's finished Mishpatim, Moshe says to the elders, you come with me to the mountain. Aaron and Hur, mm -hmm. Aaron and and uh, and, uh, and um, yeah, and Hur oh. and Yoshua will be at the foot of the mountain. You, Zekanim, stay here. Wait for me. I'm going up on the mountain to learn the Torah for the Hashem. Right. right? He leaves. Right. And and there, what are we doing? He did not yet have a chance to say Truma and Tzavah. It's right after Mishpatim. See, Rashi has a certain point, right? Where does Truma and Tzavah commandments come to the people? If he just said goodbye to them, he went up the mountain. And he was there for 40 days. End of Mishpatim. Next, Truma. Hashem says to Moshe, tell the people, bring you contributions, and all the people brought contributions, and da 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 Well, Rashi says, well, that can't be, because Moshe is still on the mountain. And we haven't talked about the Egel yet. So, while he's on the mountain, Hashem tells him this story about uh, telling the people uh, about the contributions while he's there learning the Torah. That, that's what the Torah wants to tell us now. No, 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 no. Jump ahead to, to the Egel while he's in the mountain. Hashem is learning with him. The people make the Egel and he goes down. And there's that interruption, you know, where he actually breaks the Luchot and so on and so on. And then when they make up, Hashem commands him for the uh, contributions to the Mishkan. So you ask Rashi, why did the Torah write it that way? He says, I don't know. I don't know, but, but, but it is uh, pretty difficult to say. If you look at hmm. Mishpatim, right? Mishpatim ends with Hashem, with Moshe saying goodbye to the people, I'm going up on the mountain. Zakara. Mishpatim, uh, 20... 24. And the, 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 right? And the, the mountain is up there with fire and bring, you know, and the top. You know, all the people see it. And Moshe goes into the cloud. And he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. Why 40 days? No, seven. I don't know. You don't, you don't have an answer about it. No. no. I don't know. The big number. number. Mystic like you would probably have a good idea why it's yeah. 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 But it is true, by the way, Eliyahu Anabi also goes for 40 days isolated in the mountain before Hashem speaks to him. And, uh, and Yonah, how long was Yonah in the valley of the Boreal? Three. Three. How many? Three. Three days? Yeah, yeah I think three days. Three nights. Uh, how long was uh, how long was Eliyahu on Har Karmel with the drought? I couldn't be forty days. No, no, no. 
That's 40 days. Okay, so 40 days was when he went to the mountain looking for God. I don't know. Um, I bet you the New Testament has 40 days also somewhere. Yeah, because okay. they want to, to make sure yes. that that works out. So, um, yeah, yeah, so he goes up to the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Sec- next pasuk, Truma. By the very Hashem of Moshe, the more the bear of Israel, the Yikuli Truma meit kolish Hashem Yidven Libol Yichot Truma. And this is what it should be. The leathers and the silver and the gold and the rana, right? And this is how you should make it. These are the objects that they should make. So according to the Ramban, this is one of the most important things that Hashem told him when he went up on the 40 days and 40 nights. That's what he was talking about. With all of those details. Well, look at the comments. And the Krashim and the menorah and everything else, right? Yeah, look at these comments. The detailed plan, the detailed plans that God gave to Moshe for the building of the tabernacle, its utensils and its priestly garments are discussed in the land in the Torah portion of Teruma and the Sabbath. Yeah. Prior, prior to the episode of the Golden Cup. However, we according to the Rabbi, we don't find we don't find Moshe repeating these commands to, to the, the public until this chapter. Rashi, thirty-one eighteen. Explained that the initial command indeed was not given to Moshe before the episode of the Golden At Cup. all, right? And this is clear, and this is earlier mentioned in the, in the Torah. It's right. an example of the fact that the order of the Torah is not chronological. In Rambam's view, however, a chronological order is assumed unless otherwise indicated, and the initial command does did indeed precede the episode of the Golden Right. If, if, as Ramban maintains that the initial commandment of the tabernacle was given to Moshe before the sin of the golden cup, how did Moshe know that the commandment was still in force in light of the intervening events? Good question. If he was, if he did give it before, mm-hmm. how did he know it was force? Because, uh, because it makes sense. You, you have a, you have, you break up. Your love affair, and then you make your, you make up. So you have the new love affair is the same. I mean, why? Why not? It means it makes sense. According to Mahari Abohad, however, this the question Ramban now addresses is: if the commandment to build the tabernacle precede the sin of the golden calf, then why did Moshe reverse the order of revelation to him and tell the people first at the end of the chapter thirty-four? about what was revealed to him during the second stay on the mountain. And only then... Why not? It's very easy. And really, then then about the tabernacle. We, because, because he came down and he saw the people at the, the Egel. What, what kind of commandment is he going to give them about the, about the Mishkan when he saw the Egel? The first time, the, the first time Moshe would see the people after getting these commandments, according to the Ramban, he's carrying a lot, a lot of information he, was, to was, give it to yeah, them. Yeah, but 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 he's got the luchot, and yes. he's coming down and he's saying these people that I was going to give this commandment of the tabernacle, which would mean Hashem coming to live with them. Right. They're they're sense. doing the egel in front of me. So it's what kind of we're going to give them the commandment of the Mishkan now? It's not worth it. To he broke to the Chod and he says, "You have uh, you have committed a great sin. You you don't have any relationship with God at all. What kind of business you Mishkan?" Right? Right. Doesn't make sense. Exactly. To the Ramban, it's, to the Ramban, it's very dramatic. It's it's tremendous. No, yeah. Hashem says, "I'm going to come so close. I'm going to be right among them. And here's how you do it. You make a Mishkan for me." And then he says, "Oh my goodness, they're taking an eagle." Go, I want to get rid of them completely. From from the love affair of getting married to just getting rid of them completely. So Moshe is not going to talk to them about a Mishkan. Now, after the second Luchot, the same commandment that he gave them before, Moshe now assumes, of course, now Shem is going to be among them. We're coming back. We're loving again. We're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now I'm going down and telling them. This is the commandment I got the first time. And that finally can be done. Very nice. I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, exactly. And you don't have to say Mukdam exactly. Mukhar. Mm-hmm. Mukdam Mukhar Batura. You don't have to say that things are not chronologic. They're pretty chronologic. He just never commanded them because he didn't have a chance. We have a major crime in front of us. You don't start talking about uh, how to make the Mishkan. Right. So, all right. I mean, I don't. I, I don't have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, all right.
right. But but now he says we should go, jump to Nidvat Leib. So he's saying chapter 35, the same chapter, verse 21. Ayin Ki. Tav Kuf Chat. he says. Tisa, oh, Ayin Ki Tisa 3. What does that mean, Ki Tisa 3? Okay, yeah. So what do we mean by raising of the heart? The heart is raised up. So he says, Some people say that this is referring to the wise people the, the, or the skilled people that do the work, that do the skilled work. Yomar Cain, he will say this, describe the people as We didn't talk about those people who contributed things. People who brought gold, people who brought silver, people who brought clothing. They didn't use the word They say Nidvotlev is generosity of heart. Mm-hmm. Like a Nedaba. Nedaba is a contribution he makes, right? So Nidvotlev, and we see here, by the way, in our first Tukim in... in um, in Vayakel, she says, Kol Asher Nidiv Libo, right? It should bring, should bring objects. So when you bring an object and you contribute, you say you don't use Nisa'o Libo. That's a great raising of the heart. Aval, Yaskir Lehem Benidivut, when somebody contributes. The Tam Asher Nisa'o Libo, what we mean by that, raising of the heart, is the Karva El Amlacha, to come closer to the work. Now why? Why is that called inspiring raising of the heart. There's nobody. Who are these people that are standing here in front of him? Regular people. Slaves, yeah. right? They're not just regular people. They're, they're less than regular people. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Pinky in this life here might have uh, seen somebody do somebody something very uh, uh, delicate one day. and Maybe he could have watched him and learned something. But if Pinky all his life was waking up in the morning and people would start whipping him to go out and take some mud from the ground and make bricks and then lug the bricks on his back and take it to a fire and the fire would break, you know, would make the bricks hard and he would then carry a whole load of them and they would whip him and he would take them up to the building and then Pinky would give him the bricks and they would put up the buildings and then before he took a rest, they would whip him again so he goes back to start the mud again, right? All day long. Right? And when he comes home at the end of the day, he's exhausted and his wife gives him a little bit of water and he goes to sleep. That's life. For 210 years, Pinky did that, right? So now they take him out of slavery, right? And in the meantime, what they did when they took him out of slavery, they grabbed some gold and they grabbed some silver and they got packages of gold and silver on their back, right? So they come down and they say, we're going to make a Mishkan. Anybody who's generous, Nidiv Leif, give. So people say, I should give. Yeah, I was always poor and now I have. So, yeah, a very generous person would give. And the people did give, right? So that's generous. Then he says, okay, I need some people who will make fine jewelry. I need some people who would make cutting stones and engrave the names on the stones. I need some people who know how to melt gold and make fine little chains of gold and weave cloth into beautiful tapestries. I need anybody, please? So he would look out there. You would expect. He would look out there, and everybody would be like looking at him. What are you, crazy? Well, who, where, who knows how to do that? Right? So for somebody to step out and somehow say, how, would, how could he say it? Somehow say, uh, Moshe, I think I would like to do that. I would like to take some gold and melt it and make it into fine jewelry. Fine chains, fine. So the, his, his, his wife would look at him and say, Yanko, what are you talking about? Where did, when did you ever touch a piece of gold in your life? 210 years you were in the mud. <laughs> Pinky, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? So he says, no, 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 I, I, I'm inspired. I, I feel my heart rising. I'm inspired. It's a, it's a word in, in English also. I, I'm inspired means spirit entered me. Doesn't know why, how. No, doesn't know how at all. So about that, the person, and he comes, and Eliyav comes and tells, oh, you want to try to do gold? Come, let me show you. And he 
and he picks it up. You know, there are some people who have a talent that is not discovered until they actually touch it, right? I mean, a Mozart is born. Nobody knew that he would be a Mozart when he was two years old, right? Or three years old, he's composing uh, in symphonies. How, how does that happen? I don't know, right? But it's a, an inspiration, some kind of a something. And it's hard to discover, hard to know. And in a person himself, it's hard to know about yourself. What do, I, what do you know you can do? How do you know? So sometimes a person comes to an opportunity and he feels a calling. He feels, you know, that's for me, right? without any background. Go ahead. So this is a, that's in a siyut late. That's what the Ramban is saying. There was nobody among them who learned this, right? From somebody who taught him. Oh, or somebody who would train him to, his, to use his hands in this way. Aval, what? So how does it happen? He somehow thought about his nature the person felt naturally that this is what he can do. No one taught him. The Yigvali Boda Hashem, and he is, his heart rises up, gets high in the ways of God. Lavo Lifne Moshe, to come before Moshe, to have the audacity, the chutzpah, you know, and Le Morlo to say, Ani Ese Kolashe Adoni Dover, I can do anything you want me to do. Crazy, right? Right? And he says, Kvaris karti acher. And I already mentioned this before, and that's what he meant to say, to look in Kitisa uh, 29, where is it, 29? 29, footnote 29. Hayu Parsha Lamed Aleph Beit, Re'et Karati. Ah, so if you look at Lamed Aleph 31.2, he describes it there. 31.2, there he's much more poetic. Uh, 31 31.2, right? Listen, he says to Moshe, I have called by name Betzalel. Who's Betzalel? He was also a slave. Yes. Right? So he says like this, Amar Hashem Moshe, Re'ei Karati B'Shem, do you see it? Pei Tuf Tuf Kuf Beit. One more, one more back. Oh, that made sense. Amar Hashem Moshe, Re'ei Karati B'Shem. I have called this guy's by name. U Moshe Amar Li Yisrael, Re'u Kara Hashem B'Shem. Hashem has called the name by name El Betzal. Fehatam, why? What? What's the idea of calling by name? Ki Yisrael di Mitzrayim Peruchim Ba'avodat Chomeru Veinim. They were like Pinky, right? They were enslaved. They were exhausted. They were they were like Avodat Perak. They were they were what is Avodat Perak? Extreme, People disgusting are. labor, right? In 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 cement and bricks, mud and bricks. Lo lamdum blechet kesef v'zahav v'karoshet avanivim tovot, and they never learned give gold and silver and uh, and stonework. V'lo ra'u otam klal they never even see it. Like I was saying before, they never even saw such a thing. V'hine, and it's uh, and it's a, a pele, it's a wonder. To sheim matzei v'hem agam chacham gadol v'kesef v'zahav v'karoshet avanit v'choshet. The Choshev or Kembo or Reg, right? They, it, it, it would be amazing, wouldn't it, that there would be one man who would be an expert in all of them. Not just that there would be somebody who knows anything, right? Because Pinky doesn't know anything, right? But imagine if you would find a Pinky, and Pinky would be among those slaves, and he knows how to do silver, he knows how to do gold, and he knows how to do woodwork, and he knows how to do stonework, and he knows everything. All in one man with one, one talent, right? Even somebody who trained doesn't become an expert in all of them, right? So I know how to do surgery of the skin, but I don't know how to do neurosurgery. Well, who, how, how, I don't know everything. I know what I know, right? So to find a person like that, even people who are trained and regular in the certain work, right? And people like this, right, like Pinky whose hands are always in this mud and garbage. They would never be able to do these kinds of work, delicate work, right? And he, this guy, Ritzalel, not only knows all the, all the secret skills, but he even knows all the secrets of the mystical nature and the ideas that are in the Mishkan and all of his vessels. 
right? What they're commanded for and what the reasons for it and what they symbolize. And therefore Hashem said to Moshe that he should see this as a miracle. Listen, I have just called by name Bitzala. He, Hashem is sort of like made a miraculous person. He just pulled him up out of humanity. It just, I don't know, right? It came, it came from God. And you should know, Moshe, that I have filled that man with the Spirit of God to know all of these things in order that he should make the Mishkan. Because it was Hashem's will that there should be a Mishkan made in the Midbar. For his honor, he had created it. Because he is the one who had established all the generations from beginning. Uh, like he said, huh, that's interesting. Who, do you remember that phrase? Who did he say that to? Yirmiyahu. When Yirmiyahu was chosen by God, God says to him, very controversial statement. I know you. Very controversial statement. I mean, where did I read this recently? What does that mean? He says, well, who am I? How, how am I going to be a prophet? I, 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 I'm nobody. I'm a little child. I'm a, I'm a young man. I don't have any experience. I don't have anything. So Hashem says to him, don't say that. Because I have known you from the time you are an embryo. <laughs> In the womb, I knew you. Right? And before you came out of the womb, I have sanctified you. So what is that? The Ramban believes this. Do you understand? Yeah. It's a big, big... Uh, the Rambam disagrees with this idea. Mm -hmm. That there can be... You know, you're thinking, you're, I ask you, there is people who by nature are sanctified. There's a, there's a baby who's not even born yet that God chooses that he will be a holy man. Uh, we don't know for he sure. will be a prophet. <laughs> He will be a prophet. So, according to the Rambam, not the, the Rambam, yes, that's it, that's it, that's what's happening here. And and he says that's similar to Betzala. Betzala was a slave like all the other slaves, right? Hashem says to him, I want you to know because I control the world and because I wanted the Mishkan to be built in this place and I knew that nobody knows anything how to do anything and I wanted people to make it. I mean, Hashem could have brought the Mishkan down in a miraculous way too. Here's a Mishkan, right? But he wanted them to make it. How are they going to make it if they don't know anything, right? Moshe also doesn't know anything, right? Moshe is a shepherd, right? He's a prophet, he's a shepherd. So Moshe wants to tell Moshe, you know what? There's a miracle now happening, right? I'm taking this John Doe and I'm pouring the spirit of all the chokhmot and all the symbolism and all the secrets and all the skills into that man. Like blowing a neshama into a person or blowing... I'm making a miracle. And he will be the guy who will teach everybody else something. Now, so, and he quotes that this is similar to the Rambam, right? Yes. So the Rambam says that there is no such thing as a prophet. Uh, it's in the Moran Abuchim. That's right, I just read it this past Sunday. Oh my goodness. He says, some people, there are three views about prophecy. There are three views about prophecy, the Rambam says. He says, one view is, Hashem comes, thank you, watch me. Hashem comes, Eliel is walking around one day, and he's going to the delicatessen, and he buys a little bit of fish and some meat, and <coughs> he's coming home, he's driving, and he's about to open the door to his house with a little shopping bag. And he feels a little fill on his neck. What's that? What's that? It's me, God. What? Who? Who? who what, what, what are you talking about? It's me, God. And I've come to speak to you. You're going to be my prophet. Really? Yeah. That's one view of prophecy. Hashem takes a man, takes a man. and he makes him right. into a prophet. Of course, that has a great impact on the man. He becomes a pretty special person. I mean, Eliyahu just spoke to God. He's not going to be the same. He's probably going to drop his delicatessen and he's going to go do wonderful things because Hashem chose him, right? Right? So that's one view of the Ramban of the, the Rambam says, and in fact, there's a footnote on the bottom of this book here that you should be, look up uh, some texts that they say Muhammad, according to the Muslims, 
Muhammad was a called the wicked prophet because he was once wicked and God came to him and that he's born again. God chose him. Chose him. He was walking around doing all kinds of terrible things. He became who he was because of Jim chose him. Couldn't do a thing about it himself. Jim chose him. That's one view of prophecy. We can say the same with not the same with uh, with uh, um, with the Tower. No, no, no. The other guy, the Gentile the prophet, uh, Bilam. Oh, Bilam. If you want, if you want, yeah. I mean, but of course, there's about that. There's big, big discussion about who was Bilam before he became prophet. Did he work? Did he become? I mean, the wisest of men. I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a problem always. How does a man become who he is? So according to one view, Hashem creates him. And if you look at the text of our Torah, one day Hashem comes to Abraham in Ur Kasdim. And he says, Abraham, lech lecha me'artzecha me'olatecha le'bet avicha to the place I will send you, and there I will make you a great nation, and everybody will be blessed through you, and so on and so on, right? According to the text of the Torah, sounds like that view. He's like, uh, he's like Eliyahu, walking around uh, one day uh, in his shop, and uh, Shem says to him, go. Exactly. Right? Uh, because? Abraham was looking at the star. Now, how do you know that? Ah, oh, you see, the I'm saying, yeah. if you look at the text of the Torah, it sounds like that view, right? So the Midrash comes and says, no, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Of course, Abraham was not just any man. He wasn't like Eliyahu, right? He was Abraham. How was Abraham Abraham? Well, we'll put it together a story. We'll tell you that one day he was sitting in the, in the shop and he was working with these idols that his father was selling. And he started asking himself, is it possible that this is a god, that he can't be doing anything? And he looks outside and he says, well, the star and the moon, the star has to come from somewhere, and so on and so on, right? And he starts believing that, and he's searching for God, and he believes that there is this supreme being, before God ever speaks to him, right? Right? Not only that, he even begins to talk to people about it. You know, it's not true, all these things. So he's going to get into trouble because the KGB is going to come and, and uh, kill him. He doesn't care. He breaks the, uh, somebody comes to buy, uh, uh, you know the stories, right? To buy an idol, and he says to her, uh, what are you going to do with this idol? You know, he makes fun of it, and he breaks him. And of course, then the police find out, and they take him to Nimrod, and Nimrod's going to put him into the fiery furnace, and he's not going to recant. He's still going to be brave. And but all of that is Medrash. It has nothing to do with the text of our Torah, right? Mm -hmm. And there, Hashem does a great miracle and saves him because he's already a holy man, all right? No guarantee that you're going to be saved in the fire just because you're a holy man, but God decides he's going to save you, right? Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't necessarily stop bad people from doing bad things. Yeah. Right? We know that from the crematoriums also. But there, I shall decide to step in. Yeah. It's the ten martyrs. So, right? And then he says, Lech Lecha, you're my man. I know you already from all this time, right? So that's the way the Midrash prefers to see, to look at that event, right? Comes Yirmiyahu and says, I am nobody. Hashem says, huh, don't worry about that. I have chosen you from the time you were an embryo. You I you put my born. chip in. Right, you're, you're, your <laughs> you're programmed, you're gonna, be a, you're gonna be a prophet, right? Yeah. So the Rambam says that that is a false belief, right? Because nobody becomes a prophet like that, nobody. He says, he says, there are others who believe that a person can achieve prophecy by intense spiritual life, an intense development of his mind, an intense understanding of the truth himself. He works and he works and he works and he works and he purifies his, his attitudes, he purifies his actions, he purifies his spirit. He does this looking for God. And when he achieves a certain level of perfection, that person will be a prophet. He will hear God speak. The other extreme, right? That man can achieve prophecy, right? He says that's wrong also. Why is it wrong? Because the Rambam says, I believe in the first part of what they said, that a prophet can only be the man who works and works and works and works to achieve that end. And then he is prepared for prophecy 
which only comes when and if God chooses to speak through him. It's not automatic. It's not guaranteed. There are many B'nai HaNevi'im, there are many students of the Nevi'im who try to be prophets, and they're very, very, very Hashem, Hashem has to, it's grace, you know what I mean? To use the word of the, of the, uh, of the foreigners, right? Grace, Hashem finally decides, right? According to his needs, according to his desires, according to whatever secrets Hashem has, but the man is, has to be prepared. It doesn't come to somebody who's not prepared, right? He says, all the things that happen to people like Bilam and like uh, and like the Aton, he says he says you might as well ask me not about Bilam, ask me about the uh, the mule. She saw an angel, right? What do you mean by seeing an angel? So he says all of this is a dream. He says he himself, Bilam himself, this whole episode is a dream. Mm -hmm. When he's going, he's he's sleeping that morning and he dreams of himself going and he dreams he's on a donkey and he dreams of the mule going on to side and he dreams of all this stuff as a warning to him in his dream. Anyway, but so here, I, the, the, I didn't mean to digress too much, but uh, when Hashem says, says I have called his name, according to the Ramban, I poured into him all this fantastic thing. But we according find to the Ramban, there's no such thing. Right? But we also find that wants to be a server of Hashem. For yeah, example, yeah. Uh, Shlomo. Mm -hmm. Shlomo asked only for one thing. Okay. No? We are Chacham. We, yeah, we so the Rambam Chacham. would say that he asked for the opportunity to be a Chacham. It, didn't, it wasn't like a gift. Okay, I'll give you, I'll put it into your pocket here. This, you are now a Chacham. It doesn't work that way according to the Rambam. He was given the opportunity, he was given, he desired to, and Hashem says, okay, you will work at it, I will help you, you will become a wise person. Hmm. He didn't, uh, so in this way we can find that kind of person in the, in the wilderness yeah. with a heart uh, raised. Yeah, so, I, mean, what, what, so I don't know how the Rambam... What do you know to do? I don't know how the Rambam would explain uh, Betzalev, right? I, mean, I, I, I don't know. Okay, but he, he certainly would not accommodate this business, and he wouldn't think that this is a literal statement to Yirmiyahu that I have known you since you were a child, since you before you were even born. Okay, he says, listen, see that I have given you the Sabbath. What, what does that mean? Why is that uh, re'u? You mean because it's a miracle. Whenever Hashem says re'u, he means to say, behold, right? Behold this great gem of a day that I'm giving you. The, the, holy, the Shabbos is a holy gift, it's a, it's a present. Or re'u, to see that the, this day you got twice the uh, amount of man. So whenever, it says, whenever Hashem says see, he means to say, I'm showing you a miracle. Uvavateinu vazeha midrash hera oto. So according to a Midrash, which goes along with the Ramban very well, you understand that there's magic to this. It's all preordained, preordained. The Ramban feels that way, right? That there's a Midrash that Hashem showed him a book. The book of Adam Arishon. We don't know that book. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, you see, every human being that will ever be created from the time of Adam Arishon, I have preordained, fixed him, you know, gave him a nature from that time on, right? So biologists would say, yes, it makes sense, because if there was one human being who had DNA from which his wife and him would make babies, and they would make babies, and they would make babies, there is a, there's a certain inheritance of the DNA from the very first human being to every single person. Right. So it is true that Hashem has imprinted a certain kind of potential possibilities with all kinds of mutations and, and variations for all the humanity from that point on. It's okay with me. Yeah, but not to say that this person will be smart and that person will be, that, he, that was preordained. He, has it in a book. Eliyahu Bayona, Adam Arishon. There's a book, mm -hmm. and number number 17 billion 
4,037,273,422. It says, Eliel Bayona will one day be in 2016, and he will be a very smart man. That's it. It's in the book. You were in the book then. And the way you are. So right? how, how come uh, Rambam reconciliate this? He rejects this, 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 this measure. His opinion with uh, the Mashiach. Because supposed Why? Mashiach has a lot of gifts. Why? Who said? To be the, the Mashiach. Who said? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you mean to say like he's going to be... You mean Einstein also has a lot of gifts? You mean? Yes. So, so what does that mean? I mean? Of course. So there's a man born who's intelligent, who's got a little bit more IQ, and he works at it, and he becomes an Einstein. There's a man who's born who has a certain wiring to be uh, dynamic and uh, hyperactive. So he becomes the Mashiach. I don't know. I mean, why? Eliyahu, Eliyahu Bayona could be Eliyahu Anabi. What's it? Why? What? If you accomplish what you're supposed to accomplish, then you're the man who was, uh, who did it. There are those who believe otherwise, right? That Moshe Rabbeinu was born with a different neshama. He was, when he was born, the light went on in the house. Where do Midrashim like that come from? Where do Midrashim like that come from? They come from the idea that there's got to be, it's almost Christian, right? There's got to be something unique in advance of such a person who could do such a thing, right? Thinking, right? Yeah. I mean, a commercial arena can't be a human being just like you and me. So, of course, there would be a light in the house. There would be something, you know, there would be a medrash also that says that, you know, even at that time when uh, Paro wanted to kill him, uh, he pushed a sword on his neck and it became stone. So the stone, you know, all kinds of stories have to be said in order to give a storyline of a miraculous human being. You know, somebody who knows things, who just is different, who is, right? The Rambam doesn't believe that. Okay, we touch up. Bezalel, no, touch it can't be a tone. He says, even Bezalel was written in the book, then, and I fixed him to be like that then, to be like this talented person. It's, it's in there. It was in there, preordained, that's the way it is. He's fated to be there. Shinema re'e karati b'shem b'tzalel. See, I have called by name. He means to say I have called my name by name when I wrote it down in that book 3,000 years before. Vu kenyan shipirashti. Ve'odamar yodea haya b'tzalel l'tzarefo tiyot shenibru b'ayim shemayim v'aretz. Not only that, there's a medrash that says that b'tzalel was also so talented he could even put together the letters and the symbols that were used to create the universe. Another mystical idea, right? That the Hashem spoke words and put together, okay. Binyan, and there are even Midrashim that some Kabbalists were almost ready to create worlds and create human beings and so on. And the, and the idea is that the Mishkan actually give, is a symbolic of all those things, like the whole universe, and he who knows the secret will understand. So, so Eliyahu understands the secret, you will understand. Yeah, that's it. You know, that's what he says. But why, why did we get into this? So the last, the last half of this is not so necessary for our Nisiyut Leib, right? Our Nisiyut Leib are people who just see it in themselves, that they're ready to do it. That they're ready they to try to do it. They want to, and they feel they have a tendency to do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why does a kid say, I want to be a carpenter? He never touched a piece of wood. I want to be a carpenter. He gets, I don't know, something attracts him to the idea, something gives him the inspiration. It's Nesiyut Leib. Right? What, what inspires you to be a surgeon? It's, uh, for example, right? So I, I don't know. I don't know. When I was a kid, I used to enjoy doing things with, I, I can look back now and wonder, maybe, right? So I was the one, I was the kid who was working with an erector set, you know, those screws and building these little things and making things and fixing a car later on and myself and uh, building little furniture at home. I don't know, I like to do things with my hands. And I didn't like so much abstract things as much. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a mystery sometimes. 
They see it late. I mean, and other people say you should be a surgeon. It's bloody. It's dirty. It's dangerous. You know, why do you want to do a thing like that? Like, you were born. Um, I wasn't born a surgeon. I wasn't born a Friday. Uh, no, I think I was born on uh, Yom Rishon. I think or Sunday. Yeah. Or Monday. Monday. You know what? <laughs> what? Why? Why do Rabbi say about it? <laughs> why Friday? Because when you was born on Friday, is is. Propens to bloody. It's a bloody pencil. Maybe you're gonna kill her. Or maybe kill her or a surgeon. Or, yeah. or a Moel. You are Moel. Or, or a showcase. Yeah. yeah, I see. All right, so you see that this Nisiut Leib to him is something uh, very uh, hard to put the, to a describe. On the human beings, on the level of the, of the regular human beings, it would be somebody inspired, somebody just raising his heart to try to do something even though he never saw it. And uh, Betzala is unique. He thinks the Ramban says but Salah is unique. But because Salah Hashem, Hashem just, just put it in. Mm-hmm. Put a funnel of Chochmah and Bina into him. How do you like that? Okay. Okay. Elisha was chosen from, by the way? Elisha was chosen by Eliyahu. I mean, according to the text, right? Eliyahu grabbed him one day. He, he says, you're coming with me. Farm. You're coming with me, he said. Right. He said, wait a moment, let me say goodbye to my parents. Yeah. Get him there. <laughs> so he was ready, he was ready, he was obviously ready. According to the Rambam, he would be a student, he would be a disciple, he would be working, he would be achieving uh, great, great heights before. Mm-hmm. Huh. And who was the young guy? And, and David and Melech. Uh, David and Melech, he's, he's a shepherd, he's killing uh, lions and, uh, and bears and uh, he comes home one day. Home the lab, comes home one Hashem. day. Yeah, comes home one day, and uh, Shmuel is there with his brothers and his father. And he said, "That's the guy." Yeah. And he pours the anoint, anointed. Uh, well, and he was and called the lab. You are Hashem's the lab. Yeah, you are the lab. Yeah. You have an interpretation of that, but he called it that way. Hard. Very, very interesting. So actually, yeah, it's, it's fascinating that uh, I just did the, uh, the Marne book, and he's very strong about that, that it doesn't come yeah. as a gift. Okay, so, so we uh, did, uh, so you see, it's very interesting. And by the way, the first time I read this with Judy, long, long ago, mm-hmm. so Judy says it reminds her of something. There are the stories of people coming out of the concentration camp train. At the at the Umglatzplatz or something like that, where the train would come and almost all of the people would be starving to death and dying already in those closed tra- cars, right? And they opened up the t- cars in front of Auschwitz, you know, in front of Treblinka, in front of these other concentration camps, and they lined them up, and their dogs making noise and their whips and their right, 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 and the, there's this officer in front, and says, hey, line up, yes. and. Right? Anybody who's kind of falling a little bit, they give him a hit or they shoot him, right? You panic that sitting there, right? And they're going to march them, right? And they're going to march them to the concentrated, to the crematoriums, right? To the gas chambers. Some of them will not be going to the gas chambers, right? But you go there, you go there, you go there, you go there. And once in a while, one of the officers who, let's say, he works in the kitchen, right? And he's in charge of uh, putting some scraps of food for this, for this. 20,000 people in the camp, or somebody else who has to repair uh, uniforms, right? Mm-hmm. Or somebody else who has to, uh, I don't know, uh, put gasoline into the, uh, into the crematoriums, you know, to, to, to power them up. Or somebody else has to carry things, right? And sometimes there's mechanical things that break down, so they need a, somebody who knows how to do some fixing. So they say, is there anybody here who's a tailor? First of all, nobody even wants to, to say anything to these people because they're dangerous. And a tailor? I'm not a tailor. So nobody says anything. One guy steps forward and says, I'm a tailor. He says, come with me. He grabs him and just throws him into the hands of another tailor who is, does the work. And they, and they go into a workshop. And the man says, to the other Jewish guy who's the tailor, he says, so lucky. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. You come in here and I'll teach you. We'll work. We'll work. Yeah. Nobody else has a baker. 
baked, baked. He saw his mother once baked a challah. It's a baker, right? But <laughs> Judy thought that this was an example of, of Nisiu Blade, of somebody who just sort of said, he, he, just, he burst out at him. He said, I can do that, you know? Yeah. Anyway, it's a nice story. Like as Jewish people nice uh, did in, in the desert, when, when we start the way to, to now Hashem, to worship yeah. Him. How do they fight? How do they, how do they decide to fight? I mean, they're going into an army, the Yoshua, fighting nations. That was another generation, right? They lived in the desert for 40 years. And those people, uh, you know, the Rambam says this, this first generation was not going to make it. Couldn't have made it. I don't know what Hashem had in mind. It would be just miraculous, uh, maybe, to sort of walk through with people and uh, everybody dies, you know, and they just take over the country because they're not, uh, right? When we say, we do, we will do, and we will hear. We will see, we will do, and then we will see. What we that's, will hear, that's, that's yeah. going to But that's doing something. mitzvot. That's doing mitzvot. It's not the same yeah. as skill, right? I mean, yeah, it is, it is a commitment. It's a yeah. commitment even before you know what you can do. That's true. In a way, in a way, it's true. So, uh, well, actually, the next topic would be the, the 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 women. If we if we do anything more, that's the next. That's the last topic. Thirty-eight, chapter thirty-eight, verse eight. We have it in top Kutlam and Beit. If you uh, if you flow flow forward a little bit on the Lam Beit. Right? The mirrors. You remember the mirrors? Yes, sir. So there were women who came with the mirrors. This is the end of the chapter of uh, Vayakel. Didn't he have uh, wasn't it earlier in the chapter? No, that's what you think, but it isn't. It, there, there were all kinds of contributors until now, but the this one is the last one. Um, let's see, where is it? 37? 38. 38. Number eight, thirty-eight eight, from the mirrors of right. the congregation of the congregating women. Right. So. Sobeos. Sobeos. <clears throat> now, it, it, you notice, by the way, these people are not even mentioned before. Uh, Moshe made the kior, this vessel of the water, right, mm -hmm. out of brass, and kano. What is kano? The It's a what? The, the dipper out of the mirrors of those people who were the, whoever the tzov oat, the tzov oat. If you translate it, then you can do it many ways, but who came in a group from Tzava, from like a platoon, right? Or it means those people who painted themselves, but we'll see. A shared tzavu who came, who congregated in front of the opening of Hoel Moed. The, that's what Moshe made the, the vessel from, the mirrors of those people. Who are they? And they're feminine, obviously. So vote is not so vim, it's not so vote. Women who are called so vote. So what's going on? So he says like this, Benot Yisrael, right? The daughters of Israel, Hayubi Yadan Marot, they used to have mirrors, right? Shira'ot Bahem Kashem they used to look at themselves when they put on makeup, yes. right? Or did their hair. And they did not hold them back. I mean, obviously, a young woman who wants to look beautiful is not going to give up her mirror so easily, right? A little bit of gold, a little bit of silver from my package, okay, but my mirror that I make myself attractive to my husband, to, right? I'm not even married yet. I need to be doing it, right? So they wouldn't so easily give that. So they, they gave them, and Moshe looked at it mm, with... Uh, denigrating, you know, kind of, uh, he didn't approve. Because uh, the women, what do they do this for, right? A woman who needs to put mic upon is only trying to entice a young man to, to get married and to, to have sex with her. That's why she wants, right, to be beautiful. So that's not the kind of thing you should have in the Mishkan for something uh, holy, right? He thought. This is a Medrash, by the way. It, 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 not created for him. By himself, the Rashi quotes this, right? God says to him, Elu These people are more, these, these mirrors are more precious to me than all of the other contributions. Sha'al Yedehem, he midu anashim, tzavaot, rabot, the Mitzrayim, the word tzavot, it comes from that, 
These mirrors are the way that these women made armies, great multitudes of Jewish children in Egypt, mm -hmm. right? And it describes there, by the way, how, how did they do this? The man was exhausted coming in from the field and he didn't have any thoughts of having any children. Nobody's going to want to be sexually active and, and romantic at a time like that. At the, end of the day, at the end of the day, like I described, Pinky had with the, with the bricks and the mortar and the whipping. And they would come out and they would wash the man. And they would uh, give him some fish, which apparently is an aphrodisiac or so. It's a little tiny fish that they were able to get from the water. Mm -hmm. And they would have their mirrors and they would tell, and they would say, look at me with my mirror. And they would start flirting with him and look at you. I'm more pretty than you. You're more pretty than me. And they would, and they would entice them and they would have sex there in the field, and then they would have babies. And that's the only way the babies were even born, because the men would have given up long before. It was the women who brought that about, and they're the tzovot, they're the ones who, are, who made the armies, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, we're going to make the kior, because the kior is going to bring peace between one man and his wife, because that's the water that was there, that was when there's a man who would ever become suspicious of his wife and she would then be found to be innocent by drinking this water, that would bring her back to her husband and it would make peace between them. This is why the mirrors are gonna be used here. They're more precious to me than anything. Oh, maybe the wife right. is gonna get pregnant yeah, after that. Maybe, right? Okay, right? And the Hatamba Midrash has there, and so Rashi says that, right? And Raji, is, and he says, the reason, the idea of this Midrash, right? All the other objects in the Mishkan were also made from things that the women brought as well, right? So, he says, other jewelry were also brought. And among the other jewelries were also things that were not so, uh, what should I say, holy in Moshe's mind also. For example, 